Hey guys, Keith Brown, Tack Room Devotional. We're talking about rewards this week here on Tack Room Devotional. First of all, we looked at crown of life, then we looked at the crown of imperishable, and then we looked yesterday at the crown of rejoicing. Today I want to talk to you about the crown of righteousness. Again, these are all rewards to the believer based upon his works. Now once again, you're not saved by works, but these rewards are given to those that work. Uh, for the Lord. Amen. So in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 5 through 8 it says this, but you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry, um, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the rate, uh, race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. So the crown of righteousness is a, a reward and it is not to be confused with the righteousness of God, which is the believer receives when he gives his life to the Lord. For at that time, the believer is to become the righteousness of God in Christ. And that's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. So when you are saved, you become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But today we're talking about the crown of righteousness. And again, this, uh, th this, this comes based upon our works. This saving righteousness is a gift that we just talked about. This saving righteousness is a gift to be accepted by the lost. The crown of righteousness is a reward to be earned by the the, the one that's saved or the believer. If the believer looks for and loves the doctrine of the second coming of Christ, it will affect his whole life. Look at the dynamic impact uh, this truth had on the life of the Apostle Paul. He could say, number one, we just read it, I have fought the good fight. Verse seven, he, he fought a, a spiritual battle throughout his Christian life and won. He never surrendered to the enemy of enemies of righteousness. And again, you can look at Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. He also said, I have finished the race. Not only have I fought a good fight, but I finished the race. He had a race to run. And, you know, we talked about this, I think, yesterday. The fact that when he fought, he didn't just beat the air, but he knew he had a purpose. He had a way of fighting in he said, I fight thus, not without purpose, and I don't just beat the air. Why would you just keep swinging and swinging if, the, if you're not landing a, a, a blow to the enemy's cheek? Make sure you're fighting properly, and every time that you take a punch, man, you make sure you land it. Amen. So I have fought the good fight, but then I have finished the race. He had a race to run, and he did not deter, uh, detour the hard places. Neither did he look back. Luke chapter 9, look what it says. Luke chapter 9, verse 61 and 62. It says, um, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. So you finish the race. The only way you can finish the race is keep looking forward. Paul in, in uh, well, yeah, in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, he says, uh, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in me will complete it uh, until the day of, of um, uh, Christ Jesus. But also, he said, I forget those things in the past, and I reach for the prize of the... Uh, um, the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus. That's in Philippians. And so he's got his eye on the prize. Don't be looking back. Okay, so first of all, he fought the good fight. Second of all, he said, I have finished the race. And finally, he says, I have kept the faith. He preached the whole counsel of God, never betraying any of the great doctrines. It says that in Acts chapter 20, verse 24 through 31. The apostle looked ahead to the judgment seat of Christ where the crown of righteousness will be given to those who have loved his appearing. How important it is to the believer to look with a heart of love for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ that he may receive the crown of righteousness. 
Okay? So again, this crown is available. Let's get after it. I'm Keith Brown. This is Tack Room Devotional. Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.